Today, we're lacing up for a story that's darker than the deepest black colorway. No racist comments, please. We're diving into the wild world of sneaker cults, and boy, do we have a doozy for you. Get ready because we're about to talk about the sneakerhead cult that went way, way too far. I'm talking about Heaven's Gate and their infamous Nike Day Cuts. Buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Alright, let's set the scene. It's March 1997, the Spice Girls are spicing up our lives, everyone's trying to learn the Macarena, and Nike is dropping heat left and right. But in a quiet San Diego suburb, something seriously weird is about to go down. Enter Heaven's Gate, a cult that believed they could hitch a ride on a spaceship hiding behind the hale Bob Comet. Yeah, you heard that right. A spaceship behind the comet and the tickets to this cosmic journey, a pair of fresh Nike Day Cuts. Now, I know what you're thinking, but aren't Nike for running, no space travel? Well, apparently the Heaven's Gate crew didn't get that memo. They were convinced these kicks were their ticket to the stars. So on March the 1st, 1997, two Heaven's Gate members strolled into a San Diego Nike store. But they weren't there for a casual shopping trip. Oh no, they had a list of sizes and they were buying in bulk. The store clerk probably thought he'd hit the jackpot with the sale. Little did he know, he was lacing up one of the darkest chapters in sneaker history. Fast forward to March the 26th and the world wakes up to some serious shocking news. 39 members of Heaven's Gate had committed mass suicide, all wearing matching outfits complete with, you guessed it, those Nike Day Cuts. Suddenly, these plain black sneakers with a white swoosh become the most infamous kicks on the planet. It was like the worst kind of collab. Nike with Heaven's Gate with tragedy, not exactly what you want your brand associated with, right? Nike's reaction, faster that you can say just don't do it, they discontinued the decade line. It was like they were trying to erase these shoes from existence. Can't really blame them, to be honest. I mean, how do you market a shoe that's been part of something so tragic? Here's where things get really wild. In the sneakers world, nothing drives up value like scarcity. And what's more scarce than a discontinued shoes? Suddenly, the Nike decades went from budget sneakers to holy grail status for some collectors. Now, let's be clear here. We're not talking about your average sneaker camping out for the laser Jordans. The people hunting for these decades, they're on a whole other level. It's like they're playing sneaker collating on nightmare mode. Take Tony Junkon, a vintage clothing retailer. This guy didn't even know about Heaven's Gate until he saw a documentary. But once he spotted those Nikes, it was game on. He spent years tracking down a pair, scouring the internet and vintage stores. But here's a million dollar question. Would you actually wear shoes with such a dark history? For some collectors, like a guy named Lemon, the answer is yes. He rocks his decades like any other vintage Nike. Says most people don't even recognize them. But every time he put them on, he can't help thinking about their backstory. Talk about heavy footwear, right? Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, or should I say, the spaceship behind the comet. What was Heaven's Gate all about? Well, buckle up, because it's about to get weird. Heaven's Gate was founded by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles in the 1970s. These two were convinced they were the two witnesses mentioned in the Book of Revelation. You know, just your average to the Revelation. They preached that the Earth was about to be recycled. Their words, not mine. And the only way to survive was to leave it. Why? By pitching a ride on a spaceship, of course. But not just any spaceship. A spaceship hiding behind the hale Bob comet. Now, I know what you're thinking. Spaceship behind a comet? That's crazier than camping out a week for sneakers. And you'd be right. But for some members of Heaven's Gate, this was gospel truth. Where do Nike comes in? Well, Apple White was big on uniformity. Everyone in the cult dressed the same. Had the same haircut and yes, wore the same shoes. It was like the world's most tragic sports team. The Nike decades weren't shows for any special reason. Apple White just liked how they looked and got a good deal buying in bulk. Little did Nike know they were about to become part of one of the most shocking events of the 90s. On March the 26th, 1997, in ways of 15, 15 and 9, the 39 members of Heaven's Gate took their own lives. They believed they were shredding their earthly containers to board the spaceship. Each member was found lying in their own bunk bed, covered with a purple cloth. With those now infamous Nike decades peeking out from the underneath, the aftermath was a media frenzy. News programs, broadcasts, footage of the scene and those Nike decades became the visual symbol of the tragedy. It was like the swoosh heard around the world, but for all the wrong reasons. 
Nike's response was swift. They immediately discontinued the decade line and released a statement calling the event a tragedy. That had nothing to do with Nike. Talk about a PR nightmare. It's like they were trying to outrun their own swoosh. Here's where sneaker culture takes a weird turn. Instead of those shoes becoming taboo, they became collector's items. The very fact that Nike wanted to erase them from existence made them more desirable to some sneakerheads. It's like the sneakers world version of forbidden fruit. The harder Nike tried to make these shoes disappear, the more some collectors wanted them. Supply and demand on a whole other level. Now let's talk about the ethical elephant in the room. It is okay to collect these shoes. Are the people buying and selling them profiting from tragedy? It's a heavy question and there's no easy answer. Some argue it's just part of sneaker history, as dark as it may be, others feel it's disrespectful to the victims and their families. It's like walking a tightrope between sneaker enthusiasts and basic human decency. The surviving members of the Heaven's Gate, they couldn't care less about the sneaker hype. When asked about it, they simply said, we could care less. I guess when you're still waiting for that spaceship, earthly concerns like sneaker collecting doesn't really register. So what's the legacy of Heaven's Gate Nikes? Well, they've become a cautionary tale in the sneakers world. A reminder that sometimes the story behind the shoe can overshadow the shoe itself. In 2008, Nike had to cancel plans for a skateboarding shoe that some people thought looked too similar to the Heaven's Gate decades. It's like these shoes have become Nike's boogeyman always lurking in the shadows of sneaker design. But beyond the sneakers world, the Heaven's Gate incident serves as a stark reminder of the power of belief and the dangers of taking those beliefs to extremes. It's a dark chapter in America's history, one that just happens to involve a pair of Nikes. So, sneaker pick fam, what do you think? Is collecting these Nike decades a step too far or is it just part of preserving sneaker history? Dark as it may be, drop your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe.